Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. God's goodness, mercy, love, and blessings he bestows on us aren't just for us. Have you ever thought about them being for others as well? Even our enemies? As God reaches out to those who love him, he's also reaching out to those who witness the events in our lives with an invitation to them to come to him. Other people see how we live our lives. If we trust God and he blesses us, they see that. Even if they don't respond right away, it gets filed somewhere in their memory, and they might end up coming back to it later. This happened in the life of Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. He'd seen God do all sorts of things. He had a strong army. He'd had victory after victory against other countries, but Israel had this God that he didn't fully understand. Every time he encountered Israel, something strange happened. He started out arrogantly demanding gold, silver, and even wives and children of Israel's King Ahab. To his surprise, Ahab chose to fight. After Ben-Hadad sent boastful threats, depending on his obviously superior army, he was soundly defeated. He figured maybe their god was the god of the hills, so he tried again on the plain, his large army dwarfing the Israelite army. Yet they soundly defeated him again. This time, Ben-Hadad ended up begging for his life. Later, he tried to make war with Israel, but the Israelite army kept evading him. It turned out Israel's God was not only the God of the hills and the valleys, but he invaded even the king of Syria's bedroom and told his secrets to the prophet in Israel, Elisha. When he sent his army to capture Elisha, The Israelite God blinded his men, and Elisha led them to the capital city, Samaria, where the king fed them and sent them home. What mercy this omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God of Israel had. Again, Ben-Hadad brought his army into Israel, and this time laid siege to Samaria. This different tactic did not produce a different result. The Lord caused his men to hear the sound of a great army marching against them. They fled for their lives. Whether or not Ben-Hadad knew it, the sound had not come from the Hittites or Egyptians who'd come to rescue Israel. It came from the army of the Lord of hosts. Ben-Hadad somehow realized that Israel had something he didn't have in Syria. They had a God who was real and who cared about his people. So when Ben-Hadad became ill and heard Israel's prophet Elisha had come, he didn't try to kill him as he had before. He respectfully sent a gift to him. Every good thing of Damascus, 40 camel loads, and asked Elisha to ask his God what would happen. Would he recover or not? When Ben-Hadad thought he may be on his deathbed, he didn't send for one of his priests of his God. He sent to inquire of the God of the Israelites, the God he knew had power and authority. He knew enough about God to know that he would have the answers. Now think of someone that you've been praying for their salvation. Perhaps it's someone who has turned down your witness more than once. But those people watch us to see if our life matches what we say. And if they see God in our lives, through our speech, our actions, And if we continually tell what God has done for us and live out our faith, when they come to a difficult spot, or even to what may seem like the end of their lives, it's just possible that they may call on your God, because they know from your life that He's real. What proof that God is real has been showing in your life recently? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.